welcome back aboard Blurred Force One with your boy Mo. And today I'm going to be reviewing Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4, Episode 7. It's entitled A Few Badgies More. It's coming to you from Paramount Plus. So, what did I think about it? And should you be watching? And before we get into this review, get down there, hit like on this review. Well, uh, we're steaming to near the end of this fourth season of Star Trek Lower Decks. And uh, this one is a callback episode. We're getting uh, returning villains from previous seasons. Uh, we got, and it's all about the AI baby. Uh, in particular, the rogue evil AIs that are uh, prisoners uh, uh, at the Daystrom Institute where they are being kept from uh, going rogue, taking over planets, possibly endangering the Federation with their AI silliness. Uh, and these are uh, Peanut ha Hamper, Agonist, and uh, Badgie. And actually, Badgie, uh, last time we saw him, uh, Badgie, of course, being Rutherford's uh, wayward child AI that uh, tried to kill everybody but was lost, uh, in, was lost in uh, Rutherford's old uh, headset. What well, you know, he's he's found by uh, some aliens uh, who are salvaging. And then suddenly the Cerritos has to go and deal with uh, the return of Badgie. And he's super evil this time, even more than before, I guess. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you got an, an unlikely pairing. We don't usually see these two go together, but you got Tendi and you got Boimler who go uh, to see about Peanut Hamper and see about Agonist, um, who are, uh, you know, as we are looking at them go off, are the two AIs are plotting a, are plotting a, an escape and an eventual takeover of a planet because that's the thing you do, I guess, if you're a uh, megalomaniacal AI. Um, but what we really see is another side, a softer side, I suppose, of the AIs. Agnes is, has formed a close friendship with Peanut Hamper, and, you know, they're gardening and everything together, and they're plotting, and it's, you know... Uh, Peanut Hamper's got her parole hearing and she has to escape from that. And then Agnes has uh, lured Boimler there, I guess has part revenge, but a part to get get them out of uh, the prison so that, like you said, he can uh, get his diabolical plan to take over another planet, I guess. Um, and it all, you know, it goes to plan, I guess. The fun thing about this uh, this whole setup, though, is that you have Tendi being her normal. She's like, you know, super happy for Peanut Hamper that she's getting an early parole uh, hearing, and she's she's just gung ho. She like Tendi for being an Orion. She is the most Starfleet like positive person in the world because she she's like, yay, you know, she hadn't been there very long, but she must be rehabilitated. Woo, and she wants to go, you know, put in a good word for Peanut Hamper so she can get her parole. Uh, but in the meantime, Boimler's like, oh, okay, sure. He's he's all he's so over Agnes's foolishness, and of course it's a plot and everything like that. And but he possibly could let them know about, you know, what's destroying all the ships in the quadrant. Uh, and it it pretty much goes into uh, where Agnes gets his way and he captures them everything, and they're just like, he's bored with it, and they're just like, okay, cool, whatever. And they end up on a beach and everywhere, and waiting for peanut hamper and they're just like you know he's basically like can you just tell me he's like can you just tell me um like what, it, what the information i need to know or whatever and agonist is so fun because he, he can't help but be like this over overly bombastic like t mustache twirl if he could twirl a mustache he could he would villain uh, and he feels like he's so clever because he changed his his color from evil red to cool. Everything is fine blue. Uh, and he's just like, oh, where's Peanut Hamper? She's turning on me. Or, or let me just go take over this planet uh, before she turns on me. And then it's just a bunch of disappointment that his bestie is just not showing up. Uh, and so Boimler, you know, and Tendi, they're captured. And in the process of being captured, they they're just like playing along and sort. Of, it's kind of like they're they're letting letting him out on a day pass, I guess, to kind of see where it's all going. And at the end of it, they end up with where Peanut Hamper is, which is you know 
she's paroled and working with a bunch of other of her her species and they're doing maintenance on this you know space station and everything and Agnes is just like I why you know we could have taken over the world together and she's just like uh well I don't really want to do that and I do feel sorry which is let me just say there are look this probably is the part of the episode where I was just like okay really because sure I suppose peanut hamper could have changed I mean but she really was kind of a self-centered kind of an asshole and I guess she could have changed but it just it, it all happens off screen so I'm just like last time we saw her she was she was horrible and cursing the name of Tendi. Now she's just like, yeah, I just want to do maintenance and this is cool and hang out with my folks. And I just was just happy being friends with you while we were locked up, but we can still be friends and all that. And Hagnes is like, oh, I don't really want to do that in, anymore either. I just wanted to hang out with my friend for, you know, forever. And so it turns into this like weird little... <laughs> uh saturday after you know saturday after or after school special sort of thing and then he's all meeting the dad and he's it's sounding all uh weird it's like no we're just friends and all that it's it was just a strange little deal like i get it it was supposed to be cute and everything and like yay the two evil ais or you know they're now they're actually good and they're and agnes is at the end he goes back to daystrom and he's just like no i'm gonna conquer my feelings and all this other stuff and try to be good and now he's got a blue light in this real blue light rather than the fake one he was doing okay um i about that whole bit i liked boimler just being all over it and tendy being excited and it was it was silly but just like i don't feel it was a super strong you know thing to base half of the episode on uh, even though i get that the theme is a e evil ais and all that other stuff but it just turned out to be like one of those like that episode uh, of i think uh the second first or second season where uh rutherford's like i just want to try something new and then he you know he keeps thinking they're going to be mad that he wants to switch to different departments but they're just all super happy about it it's like that it's it's upending your expectations of what's supposed to happen but I just don't think it was super compelling. Uh, even though it was fun, just not, not super compelling. Uh, the other side of it was uh, the return of Badgie. And, you know, he's uh, hijacked uh, this this vessel and he's got them uh, basically got the Cerritos in his sight and they're, they're attacking and everything's all like messed up, I guess. And so, you know, instead of letting the Cerritos and everything get destroyed, Rutherford goes there to confront him himself and then Mariner. So you get Rutherford and Mariner, which we, again, normally don't see them together. So they go uh, over there and confront Badgie and, again, subverting expectations. No big action or whatever. Instead, he's just like, let me give you a hug. And he hugs Badgie, but while Badgie is really mad, but also really wanting Rutherford's... Uh, you know affection and and acceptance and so when he gets it he has to split apart so that part of his rage and anger has to keep has to maintain itself while the other one turns into a, a new badge he called goodgy um and he's all sunshine and rainbows and everything like that and then uh you know it's like i'm still gonna like just just ruin everything i'm gonna put myself in the subspace and then then uh you know the logical part of of badgie splits himself off and then you know they fight and everything like that so there's there's just a lot of they're they're putting badgie into a space where he he can't he has to confront his feelings about everything and just he just wants to be enraged and everything and the fun thing is you know Ten, or rutherford is understanding of all of this and you know he's like this is my fault but like I shouldn't have been, I should have been there for you and everything like that. It was, I mean, he understands. Hey, I, I kind of messed up with you. And Mariner's just kind of, just kind of there for, I guess, moral support, which is strange. Seeing this season, she's she's a lot less the action centerpiece and more. She's more of a side, you know, side character in this particular episode. Um, but it all all ends up with you know every, the whole whole federation because it's a Star Trek thing. Everything's got to be at stake, right? So the whole federation is at stake because Badgie, having killed his logical center, having gotten rid of his good side, is now just evil, mad. I want to destroy everything to hurt you, Dad. Uh, sort of mode, and he gets 
put in the subspace and it goes across the entire uh the entire galaxy i guess you could say and so they sort of borrow this thing from uh watchmen where he he becomes basic he becomes basically a version of badgie if dr manhattan were were badgie and becomes a sort of a god and then realizes like why the hell am i doing all this i could destroy everything but why why am i doing this and then it's like we've seen in a previous um you know a previous season someone who has ascended they've reached enlightenment and everything they you know now they ascend to the next level and so badgie basically relinquishes control and is like i'm just gonna go create a new universe and then you know go to the dark the the black mountain which is we've seen before uh you know, what's the name boimler went there briefly when he was killed earlier in this season so he just ascends to godhood or what something like that and i was just like okay <laughs> i mean it was cool that to see badgie kind of do his thing uh again mustache twirling villain thing but he just ended up just kind of being like ah eh, well why would i do that i'm just gonna go be a god somewhere else and and, and do that thing and, you know, of course, Rutherford's happy for him, and he's happy to get Goodgy and everything like that. Um, I, but I, I don't feel like... And I, I watched this whole part, and this was the better part of the, the episode, by the way. And I was like, that's cool and everything, but it didn't, didn't grab me. It just didn't It didn't get, get me where I was like, this is awesome. I thought it was good. That's the thing is, this episode, if I had to rate it, it's like seven, seven and a half. Cause it was fun, interesting, you know, it had some cool things going on it, but it didn't just, it didn't grab me. Uh, like maybe that, the episode, the previous episode about going to Fer Ferengar, uh, Ferenginar. So it, it was fun and everything, but I just, I wasn't, I wasn't like, Oh, this is the best. So I, like, it's not the worst of the season, maybe the second worst episode of the season. I, I would say, uh, so far, uh, but still fun stuff. And, uh, if you like, callbacks and everything like that this is a very good star trek uh episode so anyway those are my thoughts on this what did you guys think about it what did you think about what i had to say get down to the comments and leave your thoughts there and of course you can hit me up super not funny show at gmail.com or at super not funny s1 on twitter and while you're there uh hit like on this video subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell all that good stuff helps to grow this channel helps more people to see videos just like this all right, thanks for joining me. Come back next week. We're going to review episode eight of Star Trek uh, Lower Decks season four. Till then, I've been Mo, your commentary extraordinaire on all things pop culture, and I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Mm -hmm.